experiencing a surplus. Well, I, I would disagree. You would? No, I would disagree. In the very budget briefing that this administration gave to the public this morning, they can see that this so-called surplus, which I call just one time at least for now excess revenue, is short-lived. They predict billion-dollar deficits in 2016, 17, and 18. It is impossible for me to comprehend how you can call anything a surplus when you're facing those deficits in the out year. And what's really curious is, Susan, that his budget that just actually increases that deficit by putting forth a giveaway uh, some tax uh, revenue or, as he calls it, shared recovery things that actually aren't paid for. For instance, not taxing 50% of teachers' pensions, uh, getting rid of the over-the-counter tax on prescription, non-prescription drugs, which we had recommended, but we had a way to pay for it. He hasn't shown one. So we're actually increasing the deficit. He told a story of Connecticut. He called it, Connecticut is moving forward. Unfortunately, in many respects, it's a fantasy story. Many of the things he claimed he turned around, he continues to do. We're sub we have this excess revenue because this very governor who criticized in his speech prior administrations has borrowed hundreds of millions of dollars just to pay the light bills, et cetera. We have the highest uh, per capita debt in the United States of America. Those are the kind of things we turned around. He told a very heartwarming story about increasing the minimum wage, yet two years ago he was opposed to that because he recognized it hurt small businesses. And the fact of the matter is, the very people it purports to help, it's hurting. And what do I mean by that? Just in the city of Bridgeport alone, 49% of, of teenagers between the ages of 16 and 19 are unemployed. And if you find the story behind it, when we keep raising the minimum wage, employers are less and less likely to create minimum wage paying jobs. So the very people we claim to be helping, we're actually hurting. Because not only aren't they getting any increase in the minimum wage, they're not having a job. Is there anything in the speech that you liked? Yes. I love his proposal, and I hope he sticks with it, because he has in the past, on what we'll do with future, future uh, surpluses, as he called them. And that is, go down to pay darn debt, reduce the deficit, put it the money in the rainy day fund, pay our, our long-term obligations. This very governor who's bragging about how he's taken care of debt, nearly a year ago, didn't pay uh, off our notes that came due and payable. He pushed those payments off into the future. That's a very different story. That's a story that he told today, a fantasy. The reality, unfortunately, is quite different. You feel the minimum wage increase would be counterproductive? Absolutely. I think the statistics show it. If you look at the unemployed youth out there who were the very people we're claiming to put back to work. Now, this is not coming from a guy who's opposed to minimum wage. I voted for increases. He's talking about this fledgling recovery. Let's wait till the recovery is strong. Right now, small businesses who might be just seeing a little light, to put them back down again, to shut that window and shut that door, this is the absolute wrong time for that. It's a de democratic national movement. It polls well. Let's do the right thing for the state of Connecticut.